Implementing complex numbers involves defining several new classes. So all complex numbers we'd like to have a real and imaginary components because that's what it means to be a complex number. They should also all have a magnitude and an angle. And it should be the case that they have a shared implementation of addition and multiplication. Here's the structure we're going to implement. Complex knows how to add and multiply. Complex RI is made up of a real and imaginary component, but has property methods for magnitude and angle. Complex MA is made up of a magnitude and angle, but has property methods for real and imaginary components. And in this way, we can represent all of these things at the same time using two different possible representations. And in this way, we have two different possible representations that share the parts that they need to share, differ where they need to differ, but both can be used interchangeably within a program. So I'm not going to type out all the code for you. I'll just show you what it looks like, and we can experiment with it. The complex class we've already looked at. Addition involves summing the real components and summing the imaginary components. Multiplication involves multiplying the magnitudes and summing the angles. We're making no commitment about whether self or other are of one representation or the other. Either one works. Now, we actually do need to write down a constructor for a complex number made out of real and imaginary components. And we do that with a simple constructor function. But then we want to be able to support queries for the magnitude and angle, because we want to be able to pass one of these in to mall and get its magnitude. And so the magnitude we can compute through the Pythagorean theorem, and the angle we can compute using the built-in a102 function, which just computes the angle that you get for a point. Finally, we can write down a reference string for complex ri. So if I want to represent the number 1 plus 1 times the square root of negative 1, I do it like that. Uh, I can call that x, and I can add x to itself. And then I get 2 plus 2 times the square root of negative 1. Or I could add it to some other number. and the components will be added correctly. Now, what about the magnitude and angle version? Well, we have another class for that called complex MA, which is a polar representation of a complex number that takes in the magnitude and angle on construction. When it's time to compute the real component of one of these, we just take the cosine of the angle and multiply it by the magnitude. The imaginary component is the sine of the angle times the magnitude. And we have a way to print out one of these. So I can create a complex MA directly. This is a representation for the number 1. I can also get it through multiplication. So if I set i as complex ri is 0, 1, which is 0 plus 1 times the square root of negative 1, and then I multiply i by i, I should get a representation of negative 1 which is what I have here, a magnitude of 1, and the angle is pi. If I call that result x, x's real component is negative 1, and x's imaginary component is very close to 0. It's only not 0 because of some rounding errors with the representation of pi. So let's go through this implementation line by line. And we use the property decorator to allow zero argument methods to be called without standard call expression syntax, so that they act like simple attributes. In complex RI, I just set the arguments passed into the constructor to be instance attributes. And then I compute the magnitude and the angle on the fly using property decorators to make sure that I don't have to explicitly call these methods that they get called automatically on attribute lookup. Where, by the way, this built-in function computes the angle between the x-axis and a point x-y. 
The polar representation looked similar, but was defined from a magnitude and an angle, and computed the real and imaginary components using trigonometry. The result was that either type of complex number could be used as either argument in add or mul. So I could write complex this way, and then add together a complex ri number with a complex ma number. And both of those are going to have real components. Both of those are going to have imaginary components. And the result will work out correctly. So this is a representation of 2 times the square root of negative 1, which gets added to this 2 to get 1 plus 4 times the square root of negative 1. If we multiply i times i together, we'll get a representation of negative 1. 